Hi guys, um, I mentioned previously in a couple comments that I had lost a quad when I was in Patagonia and it wasn't because I lost lost it during flying. Um, let me explain basically what happened. Uh, I took a hike up to Shaitan Volcano. It's about two kilometers, uh, 600 meters rise, vertical rise. Um, I've got a little map here that I'm going to show you. It's um, we start off here at the parking area, and then we follow the trail. There's a trail that leads up to Shaiten, leads up to one of the peaks along the ridge of the the blast crater. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but so you follow that along that, and then as we zoom in here, there's another little ridge, and this is where I flew from. So I flew from there. Um, I flew up into the volcano, up to here, and then came back. And I'll show you that in the video. So as you saw in the video, I kind of flew up and I circled around and basically what happened is I lost my start point. I knew I was along one of those ridges, but I didn't know where. And what was confusing me was 
that the video signal would go out Ooh. kind of randomly, go out kind of randomly. So that got me confused, and eventually I landed over here. So as you can see, it's quite a good distance away from where I started. Um, not necessarily a problem. There's a clear path along the ridge. What was the problem was here along this ridge, this edge, there's a steep um, decline, steep, steep slope. And I didn't think I could get that back up that. So I kind of had that in, in the back of my mind as I was going to retrieve the quad. Okay, it was in, in the back of my mind. It was there in the front of my mind. Like, how am I going to get back up that slope? And I was already thinking maybe I'm going to find my, find my way down through another path. So that's, that was kind of the idea. Um, so what I did is I hiked over, retrieved the quad, and then came back along this ridge, and they said, okay, I'm going to take this ridge down. And it's a fairly clear path, looks okay, no problems. Um, and that's what I did. So I'll, along this section here, it wasn't too bad. Once I started getting down into the vegetation, as you can see, you can see it starting to get a lot of vegetation in here. Then it started to get quite difficult going because the vegetation is high. There's um, a lot of uh, a lot of logs that have fallen down from the blast of the blast of the volcano. So it was really hard going. And then eventually, I made my way down this slope, thinking, "Oh, I'm going to find a way down, no problem." And I l ended up stuck. Um, basically, there was a big rock slope, rocky slope below me, and above me there was a. It was just more or less vertical, maybe seventy degrees around there, just with vegetation. And I had kind of worked my way down that using the vegetation to lever my, leverage myself down. There was enough vegetation there to get down safely. However, when I got to the rock slope, I said, "Oh crap." I can't go down, and I didn't think I could make it back up. And at that point, I was running low on water, which was another issue. So it was pretty hopeless. I was I was feeling like I'm going to get stuck. There's no way up. There's no way down. Crap! I'm I'm in deep trouble. And I contemplated sending my drone out to with a message recorded on the GoPro to the parking area saying, hey, I'm stuck on this cliff, please come and find me, please help me. And it, yeah, so it was bad. Eventually, I realized that the water, uh, the vegetation was rather moist and I was able to get water, not a lot, but a little bit of water out by taking the vegetation in my hand and squeezing it. And I was able to get a couple of drops, and that gave me enough hope. And I said, okay, I can do this. I can get out of this. So I climbed back up the hill. I inched my way back up the hill using the vegetation, using all my strength to get back up that hill. I got back up the hill, and I worked my way across to, at this point, there's a, I worked my way across that open slope to something that I could see actually went down and I followed that down and I said okay my be my plan is to make a beeline for this this river here well I did that and I immediately realized that that wasn't going to work because there's about a four meter drop from the ridge here down into the creek bed crap the good thing was oh, when I was doing that, when I was making my way across, I found a little stream. And that stream was able to get me, I was able to get enough water out of the stream to, to, to persist. Um, uh, the bad thing is, when I was making my way down this slope, I twisted my ankle quite badly, sprained it. So, as you can see, this is probably a kilometer from where I am to the... the my starting by my the parking lot. So, what followed was hell, basically. Just uh, and there's no other way to describe it. 
vegetation that's about chest high. Um, you can't really see underneath the vegetation. It's dense. It's thick. You have to push your way through it. Um, I had my quad strapped on the back of my backpack. And when I got stopped and got water, it was there. When I stopped and took off my pack later on, probably about another half kilometer later, it was gone. And at that point, the, the sun was setting. I was racing against time trying to get out of there. Um, I started the hike at 2.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It should take about three hours. It probably took me about two hours getting up. And then the rest of the time getting back. And it was it was a struggle. It was, I can't describe it. It was just a struggle. So that's where that's, the, the, the quad is somewhere lost on that trail somewhere. God only knows where. It, there's no way I'm going to retrieve it. There's no way I could retrieve it. I had to be on the ferry the next day at 8 a.m. So just impossible. So I worked my way through this dense brush, finally coming out onto the road at 9.30, just as the sun was setting, and then walked away back to the Jeep and just collapsed. And really, it took all of my force to get out of that. So there's a little sign there that says, um, stay on the trail, and I have concluded that that sign is not necessarily to protect the flora and fauna of the region, but to protect the hikers as well, which I should have known beforehand. But yeah, we, we make mistakes. In retrospect, probably trying to go back up this incline and go back the, down the marked trail would have been the, the smart choice. It might have taken me an hour to get up that incline, inching my way up it, but it would have been worth it. It really would have been worth it. Anyway, so that's the story of the Lost Quad. Um, hope you enjoyed. These are some of the dangers when you're doing this kind of stuff. Don't do what I did. Try to try to um, follow, the tra follow the trail down. If at all possible, have a spotter with you. That's another thing I didn't have is a spotter. And he could have guided me in if I had had one. But anyway, I was on loan for this trip. Anyway, so hope you enjoyed um, my little adventure. I'm glad I got out of it with my skin intact. Um, I'm glad I'm here telling you about it and I can smile about it now, but let me tell you, it was, it was, it was hell. Anyway, until later guys.